We are discussing manufacturing account today. All right, so by the end of the session, you'll be able to define manufacturing accounts. You would know what manufacturing is. You'll be able to know the various components regarding manufacturing. You would know about manufacturing frames as well as manufacturing account. All right, so um, before we start, or before I come in, what is manufacturing? What is manufacturing? Manufacturing is a process. Making and rolling. Your, your, your line was breaking. Can you take it again? Manufacturing Hello. is the process of making raw products or raw materials into finished goods or products. Okay, okay. thank you very much. So, manufacturing. <clears throat> Manufacturing is defined as converting raw materials into finished goods, right? Or into sellable goods. So we define manufacturing. I hope you can all see my screen. Yeah, hello. Can you hear me? Very good. Manufacturing is the process of converting raw materials. Into finished or sellable products. Um, this one is the material for. Yes, I am receiving a Let's see. Maybe you know this one is the way. Johnson. Hello, Johnson. 
Hello, sir. Can you make me a co-host? Oh, uh, okay, sir. Okay, so um, I'm sorry, I can't make it a co-host, so I will let the host do that, please. Please, can you hear me? Mm. <clears throat> yes. yes sir. Hello. Hello. All right. All right. All right. Just continue. So we define manufacturing as the process of converting raw materials into finished or sellable goods. Manufacturing is the process of converting raw materials into finished or sellable goods. All right. And manufacturing activities are undertaken by manufacturing things or manufacturing entities. They are undertaken by manufacturing firms and manufacturing entities. So I want to know examples of manufacturing firms. What are some of the examples of manufacturing firms? Gossip. Block Gossip. making. Construction yeah. block Okay. Okay, so we have block making, um, block making firm. And I was again, we have bakery. Furniture. Bakery firm. We have, um, we have. Furniture. Furniture what? Uh, just furniture. <laughs> Furniture is a finished good. Mm -hmm. So we have furniture making furniture making firm. Right. What again? Let's see. ETC. Alright. So all these entities undertake manufacturing activities. Mm -hmm. All these entities undertake manufacturing activities. So in manufacturing, you would have raw materials, right? And you would convert raw materials into sellable products. You have raw materials, and then you convert the raw materials into sellable products, right? So we have manufacturing, or let's say factor, or element in manufacturing. So if you want to manufacture something, what and what do you need? What are the elements of manufacturing or production? Hello? You need oh, yes, yes. What are oh, the elements yeah. of if you want to manufacture something, you have material. What again? Labor. You have labor, all right? And you have a test. So if you want to manufacture something, you have material, you have labor, and you have expenses. 
quality of material, labor, expenses. All right. But as an accountant, you are only interested in the cost and revenue. As an accountant, you are interested in cost and revenue. All right. So we are mostly interested in preparing manufacturing accounts. And the manufacturing account would help us know or would help us ascertain the cost incurred in manufacturing. Please, I hope you are following. Yes, sir. Very good. But then, sir, oh. I have a question. Yeah. Sir, please, over here, I, I have not seen capital, or it's not part, as in uh, machines what and. Is, what is capital? Um, so capital is uh, good already produced for the production of other goods and services. materials, you have labor and other expenses. Uh, and you define capital. Uh, what, what's the definition for capital? Um, goods already produced for the production of other goods and services. So how is that different from materials? Okay, um, materials, um, I, I was looking at this from the aspect of raw materials, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't know if machines are also included here. That is how I, I want to find out. Yeah, don't worry, you get there. Okay. Oh, okay. Okay, sir. Good. Thank you. So, you're welcome. So, if you want to produce something, let's say if you want to produce, um, um, let's say if you want to make or you want to produce sobo loaf, you would need the raw materials, all right? And after getting raw materials, after getting materials and everything, you would need someone to take the material through certain processes to become finished product, right? So you need the material, you need labor, and you may incur what certain expenses. And I'm saying that we as accountants, we are only interested in the cost and revenue. So with manufacturing, we would prepare manufacturing accounts to ascertain the cost incurred in manufacturing or the cost incurred in production. All right. So as an accountant, we prepare manufacturing accounts. Manufacturing account. So what is manufacturing account? What is manufacturing account? Well, it's an account that's prepared to determine manufacturing cost of finished goods. Okay. So manufacturing account. It's an account prepared in manufacturing firms. Operate in manufacturing firm to determine the cost incurred in converting raw material into finished goods. Mm -hmm. Manufacturing account is an account. Prepared to determine or prepared to ascertain the cost incurred in converting raw materials into finished goods. All right. So here, as an accountant, we have another keyword. So we have a keyword which is cost. All right. We have cost here. So we prepare because we prepare the account to determine the cost. All right, prepare manufacturing account to know the cost incurred in production or the cost incurred in manufacturing or the cost incurred in converting raw materials into finished goods. So therefore, we can talk about cost. So let's talk about cost. What is, what is the cost? Hello. 
Yes, sir. What is a cost? Cost is the amount incurred uh, in producing goods and services. I'm not talking about I'm not talking about cost of production. I'm talking about cost. It's the amount of expenditure incurred. In Very good. Very good. So we define cost as the amount of expenditure incurred in an activity. All right. Cost is an amount of expenditure incurred in an activity. Cost is the amount of expenditure incurred in an activity. All right. So, cost is what is. Direct cost. Very good. You have direct cost. And what again? Indirect. Indirect cost. Indirect cost. All right. So under cost, we have direct cost and indirect cost. All right. So now we look at manufacturing and cost. You see, manufacturing is the process of converting raw materials into finished goods. All right. And the cost is an amount of expenditure in carrying an activity. Right. We looked at the elements of manufacturing. We've also looked at the elements of cost. All right. And as an accountant, like I said, we are interested in knowing the cost and revenue. All right. And so, so therefore, you would first prepare manufacturing account. And we would prepare that account, or you prepare that account, know the cost incurred in converting raw materials into finished goods. All right. So, manufacturing account would help us know the cost of production. All right, so we can say manufacturing account is prepared to know the cost incurred in producing an item, or it's prepared to determine, or it is prepared to determine the cost of production. All right, it is prepared to determine the cost of production. All right, so now we have cost and what production. Can you see my screen? No. No. Okay. I'm telling what I'm coming. Good. So um we have um in manufacturing account we have cost and what production right because it is prepared to know cost of production right and then you have elements of manufacturing here and we have elements of cost right so under cost we have direct cost and we have indirect cost so what's the direct cost what is the direct cost Hello? That's completely yes, okay. okay. So direct cost is a cost that is traceable to an activity. All right. Direct cost is a cost that is 
activity and indirect cost. traceable indirect cost is a cost that is not traceable to an activity all right so we've looked at manufacturing and we looked at cost all right and as an accountant we have to prepare manufacturing account and the manufacturing account will help us know the cost of production so now let's talk about cost of production Cost of production. Cost of production. So my question to you is, what is cost of production? What is cost of production? And um, is the amount of expenditure incurred in converting materials into chemistry? Oh. Very good, very good, 100%. All right. So, cost of production is defined as the cost of the so cost of production is an amount of expenditure incurred. The amount of expenditure incurred in in converting into finished goods. All right. So an amount of expenditure. Incurred in converting raw materials into finished or fillable goods or products. Finished or fillable goods or products. Uh, oh, my question to you is how do you determine the cost of production? Hello, Jonathan. Yeah, we, yeah, we, we can hear you. Sir. Why are you not responding? Wow. Okay, you let's proceed. So I was talking about the cost of production, right? And I was mm. saying cost of production is the cost incurred in conversion materials to finished goods, all right? And I'm asking how to determine the cost of production, or how do we determine cost of production? Any idea? Okay, so if you want to determine cost of production, you see we have cost and what production or cost and manufacturing. We have the factors of production and we have factors of what cost. All right, so to produce something or in production, in production we have material plus labor plus what expenses plus expenses all right and with cost uh, with cost we have direct cost plus what um, indirect. indirect very good indirect cost So 
So with material, we have, sorry, with production, we have material plus labor plus expense. Yes. Yes, I don't know if I'm the only one, but I can't see your screen. Wow, okay, I'm coming. All right, thanks for pointing out. Is it okay now? Yes, please. Thank, Thank you. you. Welcome. So, like I was saying, with production, we have material plus labor plus expense. All right, and and the cost we have direct and indirect. All right, and we have to determine cost of production. Cost of production. All right. And you all know that in mathematics, of means multiplication, right? So we have cost, cost of Um, is it okay now? Hello? Yes, yes, okay. yes sir. So, um, with cost of production, like I was saying, off in mathematics means multiplication, all right? So, we have cost and we have production. We know elements of cost and we know elements of what? Production, all right? So, cost times production will give us cost of production all right so on the cost of production we have cost all right and under cost to know to tell cost or to know the cost of something we have direct and we have indirect so we have under cost we have into bracket direct direct cost plus indirect cost. All right. So now direct cost plus indirect cost will give us cost. Off means multiplication or time. Okay. Of production, uh -huh. what are the elements of production? Material, material plus what? Labor plus expense. Mm -hmm. So now we have direct cost plus indirect cost of material plus labor, plus expense. All right, so how do we expand this expression? How do you expand this expression? Please? Pardon? Can you multiply everything in the first bracket by everything in the second bracket? Very good. So first of all, we have direct we have direct cost in this bracket, material plus labor plus expense. All right. And then we add
And let me ask indirect. Hello? Okay. Hello? Hello. I hope I hope I hope you're all flowing. Yes. And we have indirect cost into bracket. Uh, into bracket what? Material plus labor plus exchange. Material plus labor plus exchange. Mm -hmm. Okay. So with the first one or under direct, you would have direct cost and material. And what would that give us? Direct material cost. Very good. So we have direct material cost, all right, plus we have direct cost plus labor. And that'll give us, di sorry, direct cost times labor. And that'll give us direct labor cost. And the last one is direct Direct expense cost. All right, and we add with the indirect, we have indirect material cost. What again? Indirect labor cost plus plus direct cost. Mm -hmm. So we have direct material cost, direct labor cost, and direct expense cost. And then we add direct indirect material cost. Indirect labor cost and what indirect expense. Can you note that all these are under cost of production? So under cost of production, you have direct material cost plus direct labor cost plus direct expense cost plus indirect material cost plus indirect labor cost plus indirect expense. All right. And in accounting, the summation of all direct costs is termed as prime cost. All right. So direct material. Real cost, or let's say DEC prime prime cost. All right, and all in that our summation of all indirect costs is termed as overhead. If we get to the IMC plus ILC plus. IEC and the term given to it is overhead. All right. Hello, what is prime cost? So prime cost is the submission of all direct costs. Very good. And what is overhead? The summation of all indirect costs. Very good. All right. All right.
Um, hello, can you hear me now? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Loud and clear. So, my, my next question is Mr. Now. Johnson. Can you, can you ask the host to make me a call? Yes, please. Yes, please. Very good. So, like I was saying, under cost of production, we have summation of all direct production costs, right? And that gives, that gives us prime cost. And we have summation of all indirect production costs, which is termed as overhead. So, if you want to know cost of production, which is COP, you have prime cost plus what? Overhead cost, overhead. Okay, so you have prime cost plus overhead. Right. So prime cost plus overhead give us cost of. Production. All right. And, and uh, cost, you have direct you have direct expense cost, direct labor cost, and indirect expense cost. All right. So now let's talk about prime cost. Prime cost. Uh -huh. What's the definition for prime cost? Hello? Can you hear me, please? Yes, sir. Please, prime cost is a summation of all direct costs. Very good. Prime cost is the summation of all production. Sorry, of all direct production. Right. And on the prime cost, we have direct material cost. We have direct material cost. What is direct material cost? Direct material cost is, is the cost is the cost of material or is the cost of direct material or raw material is used in production. Right. That part, I'm sorry. Direct material cost is the cost of raw materials used in what production. Is the cost of raw materials used in production. Not raw materials available for production, but raw materials used in production. All right. So let's go through the format for the format for determining raw materials used in production. All right. So to determine raw materials used in production, 
और जी एम सी and at dnc we have opening inventory of raw materials all right and opening inventory of raw materials is the raw materials portfolio from the previous year please help yes sir, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes. so under direct material cost you see direct material cost is the cost of raw materials consumed not cost of raw materials bought or cost of raw materials available. But then cost of raw materials consumed in the cost of what? In the cost of production. So on the direct material cost, we have opening inventory of raw material. All right. And then we add net purchases of raw material. All right. And next purchase of raw material is the additional raw materials acquired or additional raw materials purchased. So we have opening inventory of raw material plus net purchases of raw material. All right, and then we less um, minus drawings of raw materials. All right, so we have opening inventory of raw materials plus net purchase of raw materials minus drawings of raw materials. And this will give us cost of raw materials available, available for for very good available for production or manufacturing all right but we are not interested in knowing the cost of raw materials available for production all right we are interested in knowing the cost of raw materials consumed if you want to know cost of raw materials consumed you have so this is the first step and the direct material cost we have We have I. We have I. Cost of raw materials available for production. And if you want to do cost of raw materials available for production, you have opening inventory of raw materials. You add net purchases of raw materials, and then less drawings of raw materials. All right. And the next step is cost of RM available for production available for production minus closing inventory closing of materials closing inventory of raw material all right so um, cost of raw materials available. Hello. 
Hello. Hi. Hi. Can you hear me now? Yes, yeah. please. Yes, sir. Um, my network is really messing up this morning. All right, Johnson. Okay, okay, Johnson. Kindly make me a co-host. Who did I say? All right. Good. So, like I was saying, on the direct material course, we have opening inventory of raw materials plus net purchases minus raw materials drawings. All right. And that will give us the cost of raw materials available for production. And then the next step is to list closing inventory of raw materials from cost of raw materials available for production. And that will give us the cost of raw materials consumed. All right. Um, is someone talking? Okay, let's proceed. So, and I was saying under, under direct material cost, you see, you have opening inventory and net pages. And I'm asking of how to determine the net pages. How do we determine net pages? It's add purchases. Uh -huh. So to determine our net purchase of R RM equals purchases of RM. Uh -huh. Again, yes, we turn our doors. No, we add something first. When you when courage. you buy courage, material, courage in words, courage in words, yeah, yeah, yeah. courage in words, plus minus what return out, return out words. Of RM and the courage in words to must return <sighs> RM. Courage in what of RM. Mm -hmm. So now the cost now, now to know the cost of if you have a noisy background, can you meet yourself? If you have a noisy background, please meet yourself. Johnson, can you check that person for me? Good. So, um, to know the cost of raw materials consumed, the first item is opening inventory, all right? And then you add net purchases. And the net purchases, you have purchases plus carried inward minus return outward, all right? And then if there is any goods drawing less, that'll give us cost of raw materials available for production, all right? And then we less closing inventory. That'll give us cost of raw materials. <laughs> All right, so um, can you see my writing part? Yes, yes sir. hello. Okay, you let me use Excel instead of you know, writing part. Let me use Excel. Hold on. Um, All right, I hope you can see my Excel sheet. Yes. Yes, sir. Very yes, good. Please. So, very good. So, if you want to determine the cost of, if you want to determine the cost of direct material, 
or we have um, we have this thing is not We have direct. Is that direct material cost or raw materials? Uh, raw materials. Right? So under raw materials, we have our currency here. Mm -hmm. The first item, or the first item, please. Hello. Opening inventory. Opening inventory. We have opening inventory. All right. And we have the amount here. And then we add net purchases. And the net purchases, we have purchases. All right. We have our purchases figure here. And then we add carries in what? We have our carries in what you guys say. Uh -huh. And then we let return outwards. Return, return outwards. We have return outwards figure here. At the beginning of the business amount, right? And the cost of the payment, we acquired additional raw materials. So the opening raw materials plus additional raw materials give us cost of raw materials available for production. So we have cost of RM available for production. All right, and that's the summation of opening raw materials plus. Next purchases. No, no, no. Before that, um, I'm sorry. Before that, you're supposed to. Yes. I'm saying please, the next purchases. Is it the addition of the opening stock to the returns outside? Hello. Hi. Hello, sir. Hello, sir. Um, um, can you please take your question again? Oh, I was asking if the next purchase is the submission from the opening inventory to returns houses, but I've seen it. Okay, okay. Johnson, please make me a co-host. Yes, please, sir. You are already a co-host. Okay, thank you. You're welcome, sir. All right, so we have opening inventory and then we add net purchases, all right, and then we less raw material drawings and that gives us cost of RM available. For, available for what? 
Production. Production. And when we get this figure, we let closing event of RM. All right. And we have our figure here. And when we let this event see, what will you get? Cost okay. of raw materials. Cost of raw materials consumed. So kindly take note of the format, all right? And cost of raw materials consumed is the same as direct material cost. Cost of raw materials consumed is the same as direct material cost. Please, is there any question? Is there any question? All right, so if there's no question, let's proceed. So that's that. For direct Hello. Hello. Hi. Yeah, what is, what is, what is direct labor cost? Cost that can directly be traced to the final product. I'm talking about direct labor cost, not direct cost. The cost of direct labor. Mm -hmm. oh. Yeah, it's the cost incurred to pay the people that directly work on the product. Very good. So the cost is the cost in care in paying people. The cost in care in paying people who switch is directly attributable. Your screen is not showing. Oh, sorry, 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 sorry. I'm coming. I don't know All right. So, is the cost in care and paying people whose work is directly applicable to the production of goods? All right, an example is factory wood. Example is factory wood. All right, so in a manufacturing account question, you may be given direct labor cost or factory wages. All right, so when you're giving factory wages, can you know that it's the same as direct labor cost? All right, factory wages. Is the same as direct labor cost. All right, so it's either direct labor cost or factory wages. And the last one is direct expense cost. All right, direct expense cost. And this is the cost of direct expense. Incurred in manufacturing. Right. 
this is the cost of direct expense in third manufacturing. An example is royalty. Example is royalty. All right, so under direct expense cost, you have royalties. All right, so in the manufacturing account question, and we'll be giving direct expense cost or royalties. Please, I hope you are following. Yes, yes, yes. Is there, is there any question? No, please. Okay. So under direct material cost, sorry, under direct expense cost, you have royalties, all right? And royalties, or royalty is defined as, uh, what's the definition? Hello? Hello? Okay. Hi. So royalty, what's the definition for royalty? Okay, so royalties is defined as the cost incurred in using someone copyrighted item or material. <clears throat> Good. So we have under prime cost, we have direct material cost, we have direct labor cost, and we have direct expense cost, right? So if you want to know prime cost, we add direct labor, sorry, direct material, direct labor, and direct expense, all right? So here, this is for direct material, all right? So after getting the cost of material consumed, we add, we add factory or factory wages or, or okay. We add direct material, sorry, direct labor cost into bracket factory wages. And we have the amount here. All right, and then we would also add direct expense cost into brackets what? Royalties. Into brackets, royalties. And now the amount here. All right. And when we sum up all these, we get prime cost. We have our figure here. All right. So if you want to know prime cost, we have direct material cost, or we have cost of raw materials consumed, direct expense cost. All right, so that's that for prime cost. All right, and you all know that if you want to know the cost of raw material, sorry, you want to know the cost of the heat, you have prime cost and overhead. So we are through with prime cost. Let's talk about overhead. Overhead. What are overhead? Overhead. Mm -hmm. Oh, what is overhead? Overhead is the summation of all indirect. Very good. It's the summation of all indirect production costs. It's the summation of all indirect production costs. All right. So on the overhead, we have indirect material costs. indirect material cost, all right? So indirect material cost is the cost of indirect material used in production. 
Mm -hmm. The cost of indirect material used in production. All right. So with indirect cost, you can be given the total amount of indirect cost consumed. All right. Or you can be given opening. Hello, can you hear me? Yes. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Very good. So with indirect cost, you can be given the full amount, or you can be given opening inventory, purchases, and all that. All right. So if you are not giving the full amount of indirect cost consumed, you can be given opening inventory. So with that, you follow the same procedure as you did for direct material. So um, copy and then let's paste it here. So to no indirect material cost, we have opening inventory, but here it wouldn't be raw material. It will be opening inventory of indirect material. So I am, all right, and then add net purchases of indirect material. This is I am less drawings of indirect material, if any. I am, and then we get cost of indirect material available for production. All right. And then we less creating inventory of indirect material from cost of indirect material available for production. And that gives us cost of indirect material. Yes. All right. So it can be given open inventory and all that, or it can be given the cost of indirect material are, um, consumed, all right. So here, under overhead, under overhead, you have indirect material. But right. I'm saying that with indirect material, you can be given the total figure here, or you can be given opening inventory and all that. So if you're giving the total figure, you just apply the total figure here, all right. But when you are giving the opening inventory purchases and all that, you take the direct material through the same processes as you did for the raw materials. Please, I hope you are following. Yes, sir. Yes, yes, sir. yes sir. We have indirect material, and then we add indirect labor. Direct labor. Mm. So indirect labor. What is it? Mm -hmm. It is the cost incurred in paying people whose work is not directly attributable to production. All right. The cost incurred in paying people whose work is not directly attributable to production or less the production of goods. All right, example is security man's salary. All right, without security man, production would still go on. Example is factory supervisor's salary. Without you can't see the screen, are you sure? Can see. But I'm sorry. Who else can see the screen? Hello? Say please, we can see. Maybe we can see. Say please, we can see. Okay. You can see it. Okay, thank you. So under indirect labor cost, you can have salaries or you can have factory salaries, right? So under factory salaries, you can have security man salary, you can have supervisor salary, you can have factory um um let's say um how do you call it? Okay, so you have factory security man salary, factory supervisor's salary, factory employee's salary, right? So salaries are under 
or salaries are indirect. All right, so. And then uh, or in that to create man's salary. All right, so we have a figure here. And we have factory. I'm sorry, the figure is supposed to be in the second in the fourth column. All right, and we have factory. Supervisor salary. We have the amount here. All right. So when you sum up, we get total factory. And then the last one is factory expenses or indirect. Expense cost. Mm -hmm. uh, so, what are some of the examples of indirect expense? On the indirect expense cost, we have factory rent, we have um, factory electricity. Uh -huh. Any other? Hello? Please, can you hear me? Yes, sir. Yes, please. Uh, so yes, what are please. Some of the examples of, what are some of the examples of indirect expenses? Water bills. Okay, so factory, utility bills. What again? General expenses. Factory, general expense. Uh -huh. What again? Depreciation on factory equipment. Depreciation on factory equipment. Uh -huh. What again? Factory light and heat. Factory insurance. Factory power. Factory insurance. All right. Eat, eat. So all these are classified as indirect expense cost. All right. So here on the indirect On the indirect expense, we have and it's easy. All right, so let's sum them up. So when we sum them up, we get total indirect but um, indirect expense. All right, so now we have prime cost plus overhead, and on the overhead, we have. Indirect material, you have indirect labor, and you have indirect expense. So when you sum up all these, you get cost of production. You get cost of production, all right? And we have our cost of production figure here. So, any question? I don't trust you. Is there any question, please? Hello? Hi. Is there any question? 
Can patients be an example of direct experience? What? Patent. What is patent? Like, it's another form of copyright. Patent is an asset. Copyright is an asset. Yeah, it's not an experience, it's an asset. Mm -hmm. Is there any other question, please? Okay, so if there's no question, I have a question for you. And my question is, I hope you can see my screen. So let's say in an organization, in an organization, we have... No, we can't see you. I'm coming, hold on. We can see All right. Okay, so let's say in an organization we have um, we have opening inventory of raw material. We have opening inventory of RM to be let's say um, eight thousand, right? And we have fifty feet of RM. We have purchases of RM to be, uh, let's say, 12,000. We have carried in what? Of RM. To be 300. The person with the noisy background, please advise us. And we have return in the, sorry, return outward of RM. It's let's say um let's say five hundred, right? And we have royalties. We have cost of royalties to be thousand. We have um um security man salary now security man salary to be um two thousand we have factory wages to be three thousand all right and we have um indirect material cost to be mm -hmm. the person with the noisy background please advise yourself and we have um um factory rent to be 7,000, no, 7,000 is too much. Let's say 1,000 to this. And we have factory power to be 500, All right? And let's say we have the cost of plant and machinery. Cost of plant and machinery to be, let's say, 70,000. Mm -hmm. And in the additional information, the additional information, we have additional information I, factory wages oil, is 500. II depreciation is to be charged on P and M using 
you do swim by land. No, use it still on the plate. You didn't still on the plate at the rate of 10% per annum. So, required. So, you are required to determine the cost of production. Mm -hmm. So, let's say you've been given these items, all right, with additional information. And you are to determine the cost of production. You are to determine the cost of production. So, what is the cost of production, please? Hello? Please, can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Uh, so, uh, uh -huh. So, uh, okay, so let's move yes. to the next. So she. Um, let's move to the Excel sheet. We have the Excel sheet here. Mm -hmm. All right. <clears throat> so, we have to determine cost of production, right? And in determining cost of production, we have direct material. We have our currency sign here. One, two. Okay. For our direct material, we have opening inventory. What's the cost of opening inventory? Eight thousand. Eight thousand. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then. Hello. Hi. Hello, sir. Twelve thousand. Twelve thousand. Twelve thousand. And then we add the carriage in what? In what? What is the figure for carriage? 300. 300. 300. Yeah. And then we less return output. What is the figure for return output? 500. 500. So, what will be the figure for um, next purchases? 11,800. 11,000. 800, very good. And um, where we giving um, cost of raw materials going? No, please. No. Okay. So what is the cost of raw materials available for production? 19,800. Okay, can you hold on for me? Um, 19,000. 800. 800, all right. And then we where we're giving closing inventory of raw material. No. Okay, so that one, that one would come in the additional information. So in the additional information, I, 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 now let's the amount is three thousand right so what will be the cost of raw materials in sixteen thousand eight hundred 
16,800. All right. Uh, so what do we do next? Please, what do we do next? You add a um, so cost of growing and um, then add direct expenses and direct labor. Okay, so we add factory work wages. So we add factory wages. And what's the amount? 3,000. 3, what's the amount of factory wages? Hello? Three thousand. Please note that to the factory wages, we are also given amount outstanding. All right, so we have amount outstanding and amount paid. So what do you have for factory wages? Very good. Three thousand five hundred. And then we have royalty. What's the figure for royalty? Thousand. 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 So what will be the figure for prime cost? What will be the figure for prime cost, please? Eighty one thousand three hundred. Okay, thank you. And then we add overhead. All right. <clears throat> Under overhead, we have indirect material. What's the cost, please? Two thousand. Two thousand. And we have indirect labor or decreasing on salary. SM salary. What's the amount, please? 2000. 2000, okay. And then we have. Um, Let's see. We have um, factory rent, factory power, and depreciation. Uh, Hello. Hi. Please, what's the figure for factory rent? Thousand cities. Thousand. And we have factory power. What's the figure for factory power? Five hundred. Five hundred. The last one is depreciation. What's the figure for depreciation? Seven thousand. Seven thousand. So what will be the total figure for overhead? Hello? 12,500. 12,500. 12, and what will be the figure for cost of production? That's mm -hmm. Very good. Very good. So that's that for cost of production. All right. So if you want to know the cost of production, you have prime cost and what overhead. And the prime cost, you have direct material cost, you have direct labor cost, you have direct expense cost. And the overhead, you have indirect material indirect labor and what indirect expense please hope you are following yes please very good okay so let's 
move on to the next step. So after knowing your cost, after knowing your cost of production, you see, let's say we have um, we have a firm or we have a manufacturing firm entitled, um, let's say, um, UGBS. I hope you can all see my writing part. No. Yes. It's black. It's Blair, are you sure? Better now. Mm -hmm. Let's say we have VGBS 208 Sobo Mix. All right. VGBS 208 Sobo Mix. All right. And this manufacturing firm produces Sobo All right. Here we are, Sobo to um so below making firm. Uh, so this firm would manufacture the so below, so we would have the so below list and everything in this book. All right, so this is the book. All right, and in this book we have direct materials or we have raw materials. All right, and with the raw materials, you can have so below leaves. You can have uh, what again? What are some of the raw materials? Ginger. You have, you have so below leaves. You have ginger. We have water and all that, right? And we can have direct. So this is raw material. You can have direct labor. All right, so direct labor is the amount paid to the person doing or mixing the sobolo. All right, and we may incur royalties. All right, and we may also have indirect material. All right, indirect material. That's IM. You may incur indirect labor and what? Indirect in expense. Thing. So in this book, in this bowl, we have cost of what? Cost of production. All right. We have cost of production. All right. And the item in this bowl, the, the item here, the liquid here is the what? Is the sobolo mixture. All right. And we are to produce the sobolo or we are to convert the sobolo leaf and everything into a syllable state, all right, or into a syllable product, all right. And we all know that before the mixture here is converted into a syllable product, it must be transferred into bottles, all right. So we may have bottles here. All right. So even though, even though the mixture here is so blue, all right, but it is not complete product. It's not a complete product, all right, because it has not been transferred into bottles. Please, I hope you are following. Yes. yes. And at the end of the day, we would only transfer the finished product, not production. We don't transfer production. But then you transfer what? You transfer finished product. All right. So we have in every firm or in every manufacturing firm, we have two, we, um, um, they mostly have two buildings. All right. They may have a building or a space for production, which is termed as factory. All right. And when goods are produced, they transfer the goods to warehouse. So we have factory and we have warehouse, all right? So we, production is done here. And after producing the goods, the goods are then transferred. The finished goods are transferred to warehouse, all right? And from warehouse, you go to wholesalers, all right? From wholesalers to retailers, and then final consumers. So here, 
in the factory, we have the bow here. We have this bow for mixing sobun. All right. After passing the after passing the all the elements through certain processes to get the sobolo mixture, you would then have to transfer the sobolo from the bowl into the water, into the bottles to get finished product. All right. But after transferring sobolo into the bottles, we then have cost of complete what production. All right, and you can therefore transfer the bottles to the warehouse. Please, I hope you are following. Yes, sir. So, <clears throat> good. And at the end of one period or at the end of the period, we can have some of the mixture left in the bowl. All right. So initially, we we prepared the soap blue here. We mixed everything here. All right. And the cost incurred in the amount of mixture here is same as the cost of production. And at the end of the period, we transferred some of the mixture from the bowl into what into bottles. All right. And you will know that for the soap to be saleable, it must be transferred to bottles. So the amount of soap in bottles or the cost incurred in the soap in bottles is the cost of complete production. All right. Because we wouldn't transfer the soap in bowls. All right, but then we would transfer so below in bottles. All right, so at the end of the period, we have we, are, we still have our bowl here. All right, initially we had we had the so below at this level. All right, but now we have so below at this level after the end of the period. All right, and it's still part of production, but then it wouldn't be transferred to the warehouse. So now we have Sobolu here and we have Sobolu in bottles. All right. And we all know that the Sobolu in bottles is the one to be transferred to the, to the warehouse. All right. And we have the Sobolu left in the manufacturing firm. All right. And we only sell the cost of complete production All right because if if we are or after production you wouldn't sell the sobolo in the book but then we will sell sobolo in bottles all right but after selling sobolo in bottles we will get revenue so when you get revenue you're supposed to match the cost of sobolo in bottles or the cost of complete production to the cost sorry to the revenue please i hope you're all following Yes, sir. Very good. So now my question is very good. So now my question is, you see, from the beginning, we calculated for cost of production. All right. And at the end of the period, we transferred some of the cost, or we transferred the um the mixture, we transferred some of the mixture to bottles, all right. And we send in the bottles to the warehouse to be sold. All right. So how do we determine the cost of complete production? So we have the cost of Sobolo left, and we have cost of production. So we have cost of Sobolo left and cost of production. So if you have so cost of, if you have cost of production and cost of Sobolo left, how do you determine cost of complete Sobolo? Yeah, um, let me try. You subtract, you less the uh, cost of Sobolu left from the cost of production. That's all. All right. So if you want to know the cost of complete production, you would less the cost incurred in the mixture left from the total cost of production. All right. And in accounting, we term the cost of mixture left, this mixture. All right, we term it work in progress. The term that's work in progress. All right, so at the end of the period, the cost of Sobolo left in the bowl, or the cost of Sobolo in the bowl is termed as closing work in progress. All right, it is termed as closing work in progress. All right. So if you want to know the cost of complete production, 
we have the cost of production and then we less what closing work in progress. Please, I hope you are following. Yes, sir. Yeah. Pardon? Can you proceed? Please, yes. 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 So now, very good. So now we have, of course, sorry, we have closing work in progress, which is the so below left after today's after today's production, all right? And this work in progress will be carried forward to the next period, all right? So let's say this is the closing work in progress for yesterday, all right? So when you come to today, it would be the what? Cost of opening work in progress, all right? So we have, we, we will transfer this sobo look, Mr. Left, to the next day. So this is yesterday. All right. When you come to the next day, we have this bull. We have this same bull with the show below next time. All right. So it was termed as closing work in progress here. But when we get to the next period, it will be termed as what? Opening work in progress. All right, it will depend as opening work in progress. Please, is there any question? Hello? Okay. Good, good. So we have closing work in progress from yesterday, all right? And when it's brought forward, it becomes opening work in progress for today. All right, so today, if you want complete production, you would first fill what else with the what with the work in progress from yesterday. Is that not so? Yes, yes sir. Yes, sir. Very good. So if, if you want to fill bottles, you would start filling with the with the sobolo mister we left or with the sobolo mister left from yesterday. All right. So we would have bottles here. And before we make another production, we would first fill bottles with the mixture we have here. All right. And the mixture we have here is termed as the opening work in progress. So we have opening work in progress. And at the end of the day, so this opening work in progress would first be filled with or be filled in what? In bottles. All right. And during the day, we would also make another production. All right, so during the day, we also have cost of production. And at the end of the day, you may have closing work in progress. All right, yes. so in effect, you see from the beginning or the beginning of the day, we have bottles filled with opening work in progress. All right, and in the course of the day, we have cost of production. Mm -hmm. And when we produce the item or when you make the sobo loan, we also transfer them to what bottles. Right, so now we have one, two, three, four, five, six bottles. All right, and at the end of the day, we may have closing work in progress. So, if you want to know the cost of complete production, you have one, two, three, or is the cost of one, two, three, four, five, six bottles. So my question to you is, how do we determine cost of complete production when you are giving opening work in progress and closing work in progress? So do you add opening work in progress and less closing work in progress? As simple as that, all right? So when you are giving, um, it's because opening work in progress forms part of the current cost of complete production or it forms part of the current complete production, all right? Because if, if you want to know complete production, we would first fill bottles with the work, with the opening work in progress, all right? Before we start with the current production. So we have opening work in progress here. And then, so after getting your cost of production, you left opening work in progress, and then you left what? Closing work in progress. Because closing work in progress wouldn't form part of the current complete production. Closing work in progress will be transferred 
or be carried down to the next period. Please, I hope you are all following. Yes, sir. So, yes. Good. So what's the formula for complete, complete, I'm sorry, what is the formula for cost of complete production? Mm, what's the formula for cost of complete production? Hello? Hey, should, I you mention, should, I, should I mention names? Yes, please. please. Let me mention names. I want to mention names. Okay. So, um, Benedict. Benedict, unmute yourself. Yes, sir. Uh -huh. Benedict, how do we determine cost of complete production when you are given cost of production? opening work in progress and closing work in progress. So you add the opening work in progress to the cost of production, and then you less mm -hmm. the closing work in progress. So it will be That's cost all. of production plus opening work in progress, less closing work in progress. As simple as that. All right, so you have cost of production plus opening work in progress minus closing work in progress. And that'll give you cost of complete production. All right, so in our Excel sheet, I'm kindly of hold on, let me share my screen. Um, mm -hmm. So in our Excel sheet, after getting the cost of production, we would then add, uh, what would we add? You add your opening work in progress. Work in progress. And opening the VIP, all right? So you have the opening the VIP here, and then you less. Yes, so some work in progress. Less closing work in progress. You kindly note that closing work in progress should be treated as current liability, all right? Because it would generate benefits for the firm within one year. It will be treated as current liability. We add closing work, we less, sorry. We add opening work in progress and then less closing work in progress. And that will give us cost of complete, complete production. All right, so we have our cost of complete production here. Is there any question? Hello? Oh. Yeah, is there any question? So, yeah. if you want to know the progress, yes? Yes, you said the closing work in progress will be treated as a current liability. A current asset, not liability. Uh, thank you. Welcome. So, if you want to know your cost of complete production, you have your time cost, you add overhead, all right? You add open work in progress and then you less use work in progress. It's as simple as that. And we all know that after goods are produced, you transfer goods from the factory to the warehouse. All right. And at the warehouse, you have sales. So um let's have let me share my screen once again. Um, okay, I hope you can see my writing part. We have two buildings here. All right. Let's say in, in our Sobo mix, in our Sobo mix firm, we have two buildings. We have one building for production and another building for trading. So this building is for production, all right. And building for production is said as factory or industry, all right. So we have factory here. 
and you are building for trading. The building for trading is termed as a rare house. All right, so in this building, we have cost of production, open work in progress, whatever. All right, so we would we would determine the cost of production in this building. All right. And after getting the goods or after getting the finished goods, because after getting complete finished goods, we then transfer the finished goods to the warehouse. All right. So here we have time cost plus overhead plus opening WIT minus closing WIT. All right. And that will give us cost of complete production. All right. And after getting the goods here, after getting the complete product here, we then transfer the complete product from the factory to the warehouse. All right. And we can have a firm transferring the goods based on I, <clears throat> or goods can be transferred based on I, cost or market value. <clears throat> mm. Firms can transfer goods or goods can be transferred from factory to warehouse. Based on value. If it's cost of all right, you have cost of complete production, market value, you have cost plus profit. All right. So if it's cost plus profit, then it means we have the it means after the cost of complete production, we add manufacturing profit. Please, I hope you are following. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes. Good. Good. So, so what, what I'm trying to say is after, after producing the good, we can choose to transfer the goods to the warehouse based on cost or market value. All right. If it's on cost, then it means we're transferring the goods based on the same cost we incurred in producing it. All right. If it's on market value, then it means we are adding certain amounts to the cost incurred in producing the goods before transferring it to the warehouse. All right. right? So if goods are transferred, if goods are transferred based on cost plus profit. Then, then we term that market value, all right? So we have market value, which is cost plus profit, all right? And with that, after getting, a cost of, um, after getting the cost of complete production, we then add manufacturing profit. So cost of complete production plus manufacturing profit will give us market value, all right? So in our Excel sheet, let me share my screen one more time. In our Excel sheet, so on our Excel sheet, after getting the cost of complete production, we then add manufacturing of profit. All right, and then we have the profit here. Now, after adding manufacturing profit, we get market value. Or we have our market value. So we add manufacturing profit if any, all right? So if there is no manufacturing profit, the goods are transferred based on the cost. So we add manufacturing profit if any. All right, so if you're not giving manufacturing profit, don't worry yourself about manufacturing profit, all right? You only determine market value when you give a manufacturing profit. Please, I hope you are following. Yes, please. Hello. Yes. Very yes. Good. Yes. So this, this is the complete format of manufacturing account. So in manufacturing account, 
we have raw materials, all right? That is the direct materials. And then we add factory wages, we add royalties, and that will give us prime cost. And when we get prime cost, we add overhead. And the overhead, we have direct material, we have direct labor, we have direct expense. When you sum up, Hello. Hello, sir. Hello, sir. Do you have questions for me? Please, no. is there any question? Okay. Okay, no. so if there's no question, let's move on to the last step. All right. Oh, after getting to know your market value, we then transfer Um, kindly hold on, come in. I hope you can all see my writing part. Yes, sir. Okay. Um, it's okay. Go ahead. Right. So we either transfer goods based on cost or market value. You transfer goods based on cost or market value. All right. Market value is when um, manufacturing profit is added to cost. All right. So cost plus manufacturing profit will give us market value. All right. So in the warehouse, you may have goods being transferred based on either cost or market value. Right, and in the warehouse, you will make sales. All right, in the warehouse, you have sales, cost of sales, and all. All right, or in warehouse, we undertake trading activities. Mm -hmm. So you have sales, the less cost of sales, all right, we get gross profit, and then we add manufacturing profit, or we add any other income. We get gross income and then we less expenses to get our net profit. All right. So after preparing manufacturing accounts, we would add trading accounts. All right. And manufacturing accounts plus trading accounts will give us manufacturing income statements. All right. So in, in manufacturing accounts question, you will be asked to prepare manufacturing income statement, all right? And with the manufacturing income statement, you would first prepare your manufacturing account, all right, to determine the cost of complete production or market value. And you would then transfer the cost or market value to the warehouse or to the trading, um, to the trading aspect, all right? And with the is if you have a noisy background, you can help. Our trading session. If you have a noisy background, meet yourself. And at the trading session, you have your sales, the less cost of sales, all right? You add other income, you less other expenses. You get your net profit. Any question? Any question? Okay, so if there's no question, today we looked at manufacturing. We discussed um, the definition for manufacturing. 
all right? And you got to know that as an accountant, you will require to prepare manufacturing accounts to know the cost in getting production, all right? So we found it plausible to look at cost as well, all right? So we discussed cost and other cost. You got to know the elements of cost, all right? And if you are to prepare manufacturing accounts, we would prepare that to know the cost of production, right? If you want to know the cost of production, you have elements of cost, you have elements of production. So when we multiply the element of cost by element of production, we get cost of production, all right? And the cost of production, we have direct elements, we have indirect elements, all right? Direct elements, or the summation of direct elements is termed as the prime cost. And summation of indirect elements is the overhead. So when you add prime cost to overhead, you get cost of production, all right? And when you get cost of production, you can, um, when you get cost of production, you then add opening work in progress and then less closing work in progress. And that gives us cost of complete production. All right. And if you are giving manufacturing profits, you add up as well to get market value. All right. And you get market value, you transfer the market value to the Thank warehouse. You. Right. I'm a comment. So please meet yourself if you have a nice background. So basically, that's what we discussed today. Is there any question? Is there any question? Okay, so if there's no question, this brings us to the end of today's class, all right? And tomorrow, God willing, we will discuss the trading account. So today, we discussed manufacturing account, all right? With tomorrow, God willing, we discuss trading accounts as well as the SOSP. And like I told you, in any manufacturing account question, you'll be asked to prepare manufacturing income statement. And with manufacturing income statement, we first prepare manufacturing account, you add up your trading account. All right. And you, you prepare trading account to no profit or loss. All right. And after ascertaining your profit or loss, you then prepare your income. Sorry. Let me play a statement of financial position. Is there any question? All right, so if, if there is no question, we are done for today and thank you very much for your time. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye.